3, The Killing Game. Hello and welcome back to the B-Movie Rollout. Today is the last installment of my reviews of the Delta Force trilogy. And boy do we have a doozy with this one. Chuck Norris was originally supposed to appear in this movie, but he backed out because of the helicopter crash that had killed five crew members during the filming of Delta Force 2. That, however, did not stop all Norrises from appearing in this film. Instead, we got Chuck's son, Mike Norris. He stars alongside a cast of Expendables. No, not those Expendables, but rather actual Expendables. Nick Cassavetes, Eric Douglas, Mike Norris, Matthew Penn. Did you, like, kind of recognize any of those names? That's Chuck Norris's son. That's Kirk Douglas's son. That guy is nobody. And that guy is the son of that guy who played that guy in The Dirty Dozen. Also, that Nick Cassavetes, he's a director. Any guesses on his most famous work? In a Nick Cassavetes film, I read to her, and she remembers. The Notebook. That's right, Nick Cassavetes directed the fucking Notebook. This guy directed this. Still is it over. Obviously, this is going to be a lot of fun, so let's not waste any more time. Here's Delta Force 3, The Killing Game. Roll it. Before we can even start, I have to point out the DVD screen. Look at this. No options whatsoever. Just play movie. No trailer, no subtitles, and even no scene selection. And I complained about the Snake Eater DVDs. At least they had the options. This is absurd. Once you play movie, we open in Moscow with some gratuitous nudity. This is literally the first few seconds of the film. Ah, keeping it classy. Wait, John P. Ryan is in this movie? Why don't you shut the fuck up? Okay, this might be awesome. What is actually happening on screen is that the boobs lady is being suited up to be a suicide bomber. Oh fuck, this movie is gonna be so fucking racist. The next scene is the aforementioned Cassavetes being given his assignment. A terrorist named Khalil Kadal has vowed to attack a major American city, unless... The complete withdrawal of all forms of Western interference in the Arab world. Always important to have realistic goals. His disciples make a hell of a delivery system. For all we know, Major, walking down Fifth Avenue right now, is one of his crazy followers ready to take out half of New York City. Okay, so we've had a naked suicide bomber and extreme paranoia in the first five minutes. This is like a Glenn Beck wet dream. Why, I... <laughs> that was good stuff. So Cassavetes joins this, uh, Boy Scout here to gather intelligence. I want to know everything about this guy, Kidal. I want to know when he's taking a dump. Uh, why, sir? Don't ask, don't tell. Our only objective is to get Kadal out alive. I repeat, alive. And not hit any civilians. Bullshit. They don't give a fuck about civilians. Ron, Jimbo? Sir. Yes, sir. You guys follow Greg up. Make sure his ass stays clean. Uh, again, why, sir? Oh, that's for me. Later. Here's where I'll give the movie a little credit. It does keep tradition by featuring a training sequence, just like the last two movies. Oh, oh. Shooting a guy in the dick? That's just... that's just weak. After this overly macho bullshit, we're introduced to Sergei, the leader of a Russian... uh... Delta Force. He's played by John Ryan. Russians. Wait, what? Oh no, they didn't get John P. Ryan for this movie. They got some guy named John S. Ryan. Oh, come on! I know what fucking happened. They were going to book John P. Ryan for this movie, but I bet some lazy ass in casting got the wrong middle initial. Unforgivable. So the idea here is that the two groups are supposed to work together, but... I don't like you. Why? Is his ass too dirty? 
Kadal is scheduled to make an appearance at the fortress of the Sheikh of Mahmud in the Sudelian Desert. The what desert? In the Sudelian Desert. Unfucking believable. Another made up country. If your movie is supposed to be about real life dangers, then put your movie in the real world. Then we are introduced to another goddamn character. Jesus, how many people are in this fucking movie? I'm... How do you say? You're inside mine? Yeah, well, this movie is, uh... How you say? Fucking awful. Is it your first time? Alright, good. Roger, over now. Yes. We're all a little nervous our first time. <laughs> Multiple entendre. The Delta Force parachutes into Sudalea, or whatever this made-up country is supposed to be called, but there's trouble from the get-go. Ah! We've walked into a minefield. What kind is it? The kind that blows up! How the hell do I know what kind it is? After some obvious padding, our heroes make their way to Kadal's fortress. The so-called inside man is assigned to find Kadal, while the others infiltrate the fortress through some caverns. But hey, Mike Norris finally gets himself a scene. That was lame. Certainly not as cool as his dad. In fact, Chuck Norris has a whole bunch of facts about him on the internet, but did you know Mike does too? Here are some random Mike Norris facts. Chuck Norris counted to infinity. Twice. Mike Norris took Geometry 101. Twice. Chuck Norris doesn't read books. He stares at them until he gets the information he wants. Mike Norris doesn't read books. Chuck Norris's tears cure cancer. Too bad, he has never cried. Mike Norris's tears cure nothing. Too bad he cries all the time. Chuck Norris's dog was trained to pick up his own poop because Chuck Norris doesn't take shit from anyone. Mike Norris was also trained to pick up his own poop. And when he does, that guy will know about it. I want to know when he's taking a dump. Ah, full circle. Now back to the movie. Well, the KGB lady plants a few bombs in the compound, but is eventually captured because this movie needs a damsel in distress. Because of course it does. After some snooping around, the Eric Douglas character rescues her. Meanwhile, Cassavetes and the others capture Cadal. They blast their way out looking like a bunch of ten-year-olds playing guns. They make it to the rendezvous point, but Cadal's men are hot on their trail. Another lame firefight ensues, but I suppose the clips of Mike Norris losing his fucking mind are fun to watch. Eric Douglas has a bit of a freak out too. Oh man, don't die! Don't fucking die, Ovid! You fuck! So you're telling me he hasn't acted since this movie? Can't say I'm surprised. Oh shit, I take back the Mike Norris facts. He's going full on Rambo right now. Chuck would be proud. Come on, you guys, I've got you covered! Move on! Oh my god, Mike Norris is getting way too into this. Holy shit, this is funny. Oh, no. no! He was the only reason I was still watching. They get out and interrogate Cadell about where a nuclear bomb is set and when it is supposed to go off. See, this movie has a B-plot. It's about how some of Cadell's men have smuggled an atomic bomb into Miami. One of them has befriended a news producer and planted the bomb in her wheelchair. Which begs the question, can a nuclear bomb fit in a wheelchair? I don't think so. The reason I've skipped over this part is because it is boring, useless, and obvious padding. Put down your guns or I will kill her! I have a bomb! 
The terrorist threatens to detonate the bomb unless he can talk to the president, but the Delta Force pulls a fast one. They bring Cadal to the scene so he can try to convince him not to detonate it because Cadal's not really a true believer. What happens next is so absolutely fucking bonkers that I can't even explain it. I don't even... Uh, just, just watch it. We'll die together. Nice throw. Nice catch. And that's the fucking ending? Oh, that is terrible. This whole movie is fucking terrible. I can't defend it at all. At its core, it's a group of grown men playing guns, which is why The Killing Game is a strangely appropriate title. Now you might think that this would be fun or campy, maybe have a little intentional humor, but no. This movie takes itself way too seriously, and it clearly didn't have the budget for big action sequences, so it just comes off as really fucking boring. Plus its little B-plot about how there could be a killer among us who would set off a nuclear bomb is at best intense paranoia, and at worst, abject racism. The acting is awful because the cast is a complete joke. It should be obvious that the relatives of star power do not equate actual star power. Eric Douglas is not his father, Mike Norris is not his father, and John Ryan is no John P. Ryan. Cassavetes is the only one who appears remotely competent, but even then, he's mostly just boring. The only one worth watching is Mike Norris during the action sequences, because he goes all out insane. He looks like a fucking maniac, and that is funny. It's no wonder these guys ended up where they did. Eric Douglas and that guy Matt Penn did not appear in any movies after this one. Nick Cassavetes directed The Notebook, and Mike Norris ended up in something called Delta Force 1, The Lost Patrol. Not to be confused with the unrelated made-for-TV Operation Delta Force, or its four sequels. Wow, there's your Delta Force legacy right there. Two awful sequels and a bunch of wannabe garbage. The bottom line is, if Delta Force is in the title, then Lee Marvin better be in the cast. Otherwise, skip it. Music up. Music up. And roll the credits. And he was talking for a new it, and as it grew, he'd say, I'm gonna be like you, Dad. You know I'm gonna be like you. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man on the moon. When you're coming home, Dad, I don't. Hey, did you like the Mike Norris facts, or have a couple of your own? Then post them in the comments below, and in a few weeks, I'll put the best ones on my website while giving you full credit. Right now, right now I am the president! And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon the Little boy blue and the man on the moon When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when We'll get